What do these four items have in common? Well, you read the title to this video, so let's dive straight in. Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? Welcome to Divers Ready. My name's James and I'm a professional dive instructor and digital content creator. And if you haven't done so already, you should probably make your next dive on our subscribe button because we make videos with one simple goal in mind, and that's to help make you a better scuba diver. I've been wanting to make a series of shorter hints and tip styles videos, sort of in the three to five minute range because our featured content normally runs over 10 minutes and people have been asking for shorter videos. So I thought what better way to start with than prepping a new scuba mask. Now I bought this mask for my wife for Christmas. Uh, she fell in love with it when we were at the Cressy booth at Dima and my wife is impossible to buy gifts for. So whenever she drops a hint, I'm on it like a cat on catnip. So my wife and I are actually getting to dive together for the first time this year, this coming week. And we need to prepare her new mask to get it wet. But why do we need to prepare a new mask at all? Can't we just buy a new mask, put it on our face and go diving? Well, no, not really. You see what mask manufacturers do when they're trying to get their mask looking brand new from the factory to the point of retail is they spray the inside of the lens with a protective coating, usually clear silicon, to prevent any scratches or ding marks while it's in transit. Now the trouble is, if that coating isn't removed, it's gonna be the source of major fogging and you're not gonna see anything. So we need to remove that coating before we take the mask to the dive sites. And I've got three techniques here to show you how to do it. Okay, so method number one is just a dish sponge. Uh, I just poached this straight out of my kitchen. It's better to use an older dish sponge that has been broken in a little bit because it's gonna be gentler and you're gonna get less chance of scratching. And I've just wet this with a little dish soap and all I'm gonna do is just give it a nice gentle scrub. I'm not pushing down too hard. I don't wanna scratch the lens. So all I'm doing is just nice circular motions in there and working the sponge around the inside of the lens. And that is just mildly abrasive enough to remove most of that silicon coating. I'm gonna do this for about two, three minutes. And you just rinse that out. And that should be sufficient, no scratches. Some of that silicon was removed and some of it wasn't. All right, so I could just keep using the sponge, but for the sakes of this video, we're gonna move on to technique number two, which is toothpaste. So all you're gonna do is take a dab of toothpaste and put it inside the mask. I generally find that the pastier toothpastes work better than the jellier ones. Jellier ones? Gel jelly? Pastier? I don't, I'm making up words here, but the pasty toothpaste as opposed to the jelly toothpaste. You know what I mean. Index finger, mask, toothpaste, and we're just gonna work that around. Now the toothpaste cleans your teeth by being mildly abrasive, and it's just abrasive enough to remove that silicon coating, that spray coating on the inside of the lens, but without scratching the lens itself. So we're just gonna work that round there. And again, a couple of minutes, trying to remember the spots that showed up on our little fog test there. And keep that circled around. There we go, all right. Bring the water box back in here. Rinse that bad boy out. And there you can see considerably less fogging but there's still a few patches, so we're gonna to move to technique number three. And that is fire. Now, standard barbecue lighter, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you don't hold it in one place for too long, but the idea is just to run the flame over and instead of abrasively removing that silicon coating, it's literally just gonna burn it off. Um, obviously be careful not to burn through the skirt of the mask or hold it on the lens one place too long, otherwise you're gonna risk it cracking. Um, but all you can do is just simply Run the torch along the inside there. So obviously this is the less aggressive method in terms of ab abrasiveness, but it comes with its own risks of actually burning through the mask skirt, which you don't want to do. So you just got to be careful to keep the flame moving around and don't heat one spot too long. All right, let's bring this back in, give it another rinse off. Uh, 
and there you see one fog-free mask. This new mask is prepped and ready to dive. All we need to do now is remember to use defog before each and every dive by putting a little dab inside the lens, rubbing it around with our finger and then giving it a quick dip in fresh water. My preferred brand of defog is stream to see As you know, I'm a massive fan of their products. They just launched a new defog at DEMA last year and I was one of the very early testers of that product and I'm super impressed with it because it does as good a job as any defog I've ever used before with the added advantage of not killing the fish and coral. If you haven't tried stream to seas defog there is a link in the description of this video below. Amazon Prime, 9.95, add to cart, job done, thank you please. Dive safe, dive often.